may I ask you for a favor? Can we rise up from where we are and come and occupy these seats so that I can see you a little more closely? This is a smaller group, and I will be doing some demonstrations from here, which you will be able to see better. And so if you could occupy these front seats, that will be wonderful. Thank you so much for doing that. <clears throat> this afternoon, I would like to share with you a few things, particularly in the context of those who are involved in the ministry of the Lord and continuing to serve Him for a long time. Very oftentimes, this question keeps coming back. How do we maintain our fitness and our freshness in the service of the kingdom of God? How do we maintain our fitness and our freshness in the service of the Lord? Let me begin with a personal note. I had been involved in the service of the kingdom for nearly five decades. Some of you may be thinking, are you ancient? <laughs> you don't look like that. So did you begin when you were a teenager? You're partly true. I remember the first time I was standing in a street corner. Those days we used to have what we call as open air meetings. And my pastor had been encouraging me and one day he managed to get me to stand in a street corner and preach the gospel to those who were passing by. I was just 12 at that time. I had a very shrill voice and I started singing at the top of my voice and then a marketplace, a crowd gathered around. Who is this little boy singing? And then at the end of that, my pastor told me, you share the word. And I preached the gospel. That was only a small beginning. And I continued from that point on uh, to be a witness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It had been such a wonderful privilege. So being in the service or the ministry of the Lord for a number of years, I've gone through seasons of dryness. At times feeling quite empty. And also the kind of situations that I faced and the challenges that came my way, it took a toll from my life. At times it had been very hard. There were times when I was asking this question, how long, O oh Lord? How will I pass this night? This wilderness journey seems to be too long. I don't have time to tell the stories. The times when I was so thoroughly broken. You might have heard the Chinese proverb saying, the birds with broken pinions, they will never rise again. I started asking, is this true? I was like a bird with the wings clipped off. In the previous session, I was mentioning about stepping out as a medical missionary into northern India nearly four decades back. When I was praying for a life partner, I was asking the Lord, Lord, give me a person who is passionate to take the gospel to the unreached, maybe to go to those distant jungles living in mud huts among the tribal people and serving, taking the gospel to the unreached places. And God had been so merciful to me in providing a wonderful woman of God to join with me in the journey. And we journeyed together for 26 years. Lovely journey. It was so amazing. I was so grateful to God. 
we climbed mountains and valleys lived in jungles we found great joy in proclaiming the gospel of jesus christ when someone who came as a patient to the hospital then we go to the distant villages get all their relatives together and share the gospel with them treating patients in the village operating in the village this kind of crazy things we thoroughly enjoyed but i remember that difficult morning when i had to make the diagnosis of colon cancer which is widespread on my wife who was absolutely all right and asymptomatic there are times when you know you're shattered ministry has taken a toll being the medical director of a hospital and the only surgeon in that hospital busy work day in and day out going out to far away villages take the gospel discipling people leading a group of intercessors training them equipping them and taking care of two little boys being a father and a husband ministering into the midst of in the midst of brokenness into the lives of people counseling mentoring this kind of things can take a huge toll i was asking this question lord i don't want to give up i said your word promises that it's not about the young or the old but a new category of people and that group is called they that wait on the upon the lord and the promise to them is that they will mount up with wings like eagles to make the story i was mentioning earlier nearly 3 years of journey with the cancer almost a year before that i mean those 3 years almost 2 years into the sickness i was told by the medical science that there is nothing more that we can offer the best centers in the world i decided actually to take care of her at home converting the bedroom into an intensive care unit giving my own chemotherapy administering with my own hands managing pain at times i go and stand outside the room there is silent very quiet worship music going on inside the room and then i also hear groaning mingled with it and i listen to it and think how does these two mix together and how does it sound i asked will this groaning continue forever and i felt the lord was telling i'll turn your morning into dancing just to conclude that part of the story i have prayed for hundreds of people i've seen amazing miracles happening on a day to day basis even within the hospital situation people who had been paralyzed prayed over and the same day getting up and walking in the name of jesus i've seen blood cancers in terminal stage sent home to die prayed and healed in the name of jesus i can tell amazing stories of how village after village opened up for the gospel as a result of this here i am praying for my wife and she had not even an iota of doubt that god is able to heal sometimes the big question comes i remember the last journal entry that she made into her journal by the time she was going into coma with very high creat levels uremic coma and this is what in illegible handwriting she wrote 
quoting from Hebrews 11 and verse 13. They saw the promise of a God at a distance clearly, yet without receiving the promise died in faith. Lord, do I have to take this journey? I'm ready for it. That was the last journal entry. She went to be with the Lord. How do you maintain fitness and freshness and continue to serve the Lord when life's circumstances seem to be taking a heavy toll from you? There may be someone sitting here going through your own wilderness journey and I hope God will minister to you as we are here this morning. I often share this. My understanding of ministry is, ministry is not what you do. Because the moment you hear the word ministry, some activity comes to our mind. I want to tell you ministry is who you are. There are probably different ways of ministry. It's actually at a very early stage of life, you have received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. And then you have a passion. And then you were told and encouraged by many, go around and do the ministry. And so, with whatever little you have, you go around and start giving out to people. Tell them, these are, you know, water of eternal life. And you go around and distributing. And you're so frantic, go around distributing. I can't come down and distribute this, otherwise I would have done that. And in the process, you know what happens? You know, there are so many to be reached. And I try to reach out to them. And in the process, what happens to my cup? My own cup gets empty. And other thing, another thing that we observe is, when I distribute with this little that, you know, scraping like that, those to whom I minister, are they really satisfied? They say, we did not receive much. There was only so little. So this is one way of ministering. Ministry is not what we distribute. Ministry is what overflows from our life. I would explain that a little bit within the limitations of time. For this, actually, one of the most important things is how you place yourself. Suppose I place myself under a perpetually flowing stream. Imagine this to be that perpetually flowing stream. If it is poured out over this, Will it be of any benefit? Why is it so? Because it is not rightly placed. We can actually be in the vicinity of godly activities and also the stream flowing. We could be in the vicinity of it. Still, our cup may remain empty. Because I'm not rightly placed. It's very important to position myself in the presence of God. And where there is godly action, godly overflow. And when I position myself that way, paying attention to position myself before that stream. What happens to my cup? My cup fills and now it overflows. This is a small jug. This will finish. 
but if it was a perpetually flowing a perennial stream under which i'm keeping pos- positioning myself a never ending stream this cup will fill this basin will fill and then what happens it overflows and then what happens it reaches the people to whom i care and want to minister to i will still be ministering and what happens to my cup in the process my cup overflows he anointed my head with oil and my cup overflows my cup overflows i have an overflowing cup and in the process my cup keeps getting filled this is very very important you know how we position ourselves daily in the presence of god is very vital my brothers and sisters the reason why i share this with you i had been traveling around and spending most of my time walking alongside with many who are who are in the service in the kingdom of god many ministers those are the people to whom i minister and when i listen to their stories many of them tell me that they are so busy in the ministry i ask them how is your prayer life oh we don't have much time we are so busy in the ministry how is your devotional life oh i don't have something called a devotional life sometimes even weeks pass by without sitting at the feet of jesus and receiving from him because i'm so busy in the ministry remember those three statements which i made ministry is not what you do ministry is who you are ministry is not what you go around and distribute ministry is what overflows from your life ministry is not what you do for god ministry is what he does in and through our lives if we can remember that we would also be careful to pay attention to the days of our life the inner renewal is a daily process i cannot continue to give out on the anointing or the unction that i received 15 years back the you know the inner renewal is a daily process in second corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17 apostle paul says inwardly outwardly we are wasting away but inwardly being renewed day by day inwardly being renewed day by day this is more meant to be a teaching session that's why i'm going slow and of course the difficulty is you know you're looking at your watches and saying no that's why the africans tell the americans you have watches but we have time <laughs> you know outwardly wasting away outwardly the circumstances are very tiring out but inwardly being renewed day by day i pray that there will be a resolution in your heart for this inner renewal day by day as we continue to serve the lord not to be serving the lord for 20 years 30 years 40 years and at the end of that to be a worn out man to remain fit and fresh in the service of the kingdom of god one of the greatest battles of our day is actually the battleground of our private world gordon macdonald put it so beautifully in his book ordering the private world he says one of the greatest battlegrounds of our day is the private world of an individual that part of the life that part of your life which no one else is observing that part of your life which is just you and god this is one of the greatest battle grounds of our day you and i know that there is such a constant battle 
the enemy has set up strategy to intrude into every possibility of the privacy that you have and to take it away from you. Have you ever wondered a little vibration, a little bleep, how much it affects you? Have you ever wondered? Sometimes actually we even lose the ability to wonder that way. Because there might have been a time when you wondered. But even that will get lost. I remember actually a few years back going and staying in a friend's house and just on the other side of that house was a railway line. I had such a difficult night and the next morning I asked my friend how do you sleep in this house? He said, what do you mean? Was it not comfortable? I thought we provided everything that you needed. He said, yeah, the bed was comfortable, everything was fine. But you know, then suddenly, you know, every hour or two, this train passes and I wake up, what's going to happen now? Oh, the, my friend said, Oh, you are talking about the train? You will get used to it. You will get used to it. So actually, we get so used to even this concern or wonder about it. That is where we take pauses and parentheses. Actually pausing and looking into our own life. Why is it that this is not disturbing me anymore? My inner Environment is constantly a threat. My inner peace is constantly a threat. My inner solitude is constantly a threat. Yet I am unconcerned about it and I am carrying on. What resolution am I making? What determination?